All right, let's go over some Fibonacci uses and strategies and kind of the way I look at things, the way I use it, um, the way you should use it. I've seen so many people use it in so many ways that don't make sense at all. People's mentality on the market and how it works, they're very different if they haven't worked in the financial realm. When I'm taking Fib levels, I'm, I'm also thinking of the macroeconomics as well. I'm thinking like, all right, what has the Fed done here? When did QT start? When did QE end? Is government spending happen here? What's going on with the repo markets here? People aren't thinking of that. They're looking at the chart and kind of analyzing it like it's some geometry pattern. Um, and they're trying to measure it with shapes and things like that. But your Fibonacci um, extensions, your retracements, this is the tool I use, the Fib retracement tool. There's a bunch in here though, and they're all different. They all have their own uses. Most people don't use them at all. Uh, when I first started, I, I, I learned how to use the Fibonacci retracement tool exceptionally well. The other Fib tools started to come in and make more sense. So it wasn't as confusing and as difficult once you understand like how the market works in the sequences in which it works in. So just to go over um, Fib retracements, so these are the levels that I have. Let's just go from the bottom of COVID to the top of the market. Um, remember QE, I believe ended here in March, but it can't get any more straightforward than the fibs that I use. Okay. I don't know if you guys want to write them down or use them yourself, but everyone talks about your golden pocket, your 618, right? That's 61.8% retracement. Your 707 is one of the ones that the algorithms love to consistently use. Your 786 also very important. That's like your major golden pocket. People talk about the golden pocket as the 618 and the, the 0.65, but your real pocket of, um, you know, favorable retracement and extension levels is going to be those four levels right here. Okay. If you also want to add the 885, right, you get your 80% level. There are many times, not really in the S&P where that gets to be used, not so much in the indexes, but on the meme stocks, because their algorithms are much more extreme. And like we talked about in the last video, it's always whipping you through the 200 EMA one way and then back to the 200 EMA in the opposite direction. So the 885, also important. I like for retracements to use the 0.382 and the, uh, the 0.5 FIB as well. Those are usually your, you know, 30 and 50% retracement levels. If we are in a bullish market, especially in Wyckoff phase D and E, you can expect the 382 and 0.5 to be used consistently over and over and over again because they want to keep the market high. They want to keep premiums high and they're not going to drop it down to the 618 because they're not going to give you a dip buying opportunity. Now, just using these standard fibs and going from the bottom of COVID um, to the top of the market in Jan 2022, you can see it bottomed to the 382 to the penny. To the penny. Like if you just super novice, right? You're, you're a trader, you want to learn, you set your FIB levels, you take one retracement um, FIB from the bottom of COVID to the top of the run after QE, and you would have had the dip buying opportunity of a friggin' lifetime. You could have made $10 million on this run if you bought here. Okay? And don't get it twisted. FIB levels work on volatility products, okay? They work on bond yields. They work on bond prices as well. Everything is Fibonacci, even indicators, okay? Like your RSI. The indicators are all created through Fibonacci retracements, okay? Everything in the world's created through Fibs, right? The fucking stars, your face, the shape of a flower, it's all Fibonacci, all right? So God, creator, whoever made this whole thing, he did it with prime numbers and fibs. So if you want to figure out where security is going to be retracing to, very simple. Swing low to high. Very bottom of your structure on, well, right now we're looking at your basically super macro time frame. Bottom of the super macro to the top, okay? On the opposite side, if you wanna see where 
a security is going to extend to, swing high to low. Super simple, hold up, right? Top of your market, Jan 2022 to your October low in 2022. And we just hit the golden pocket. Look at that, to the penny. Your objective when you are taking Fibonacci retracement and extension levels is to find out, okay, I'm gonna give you the secret, okay? It's to find out which Fibonacci levels are most respected in the structure that you are currently analyzing, okay? So I want you to look at this, all right? We're looking at this current structure on the macro. Swing high to low, I want you to look at the fibs that I told you is the most important, right? Your larger golden pocket, right? It's this. Look at where the brunt of this volume is. So you have your circled pocket, and this is your major volume, confluence. It's not coincidence, it's design, okay? The supercomputer is designing this structure based off volume, institutional buying volume in shares, okay? Um, and that's what you're saying, buying and selling volume. But when the time comes for these things to blast to another FIB level above or descend lower to a new demand zone, you're going to see options volume populate and come in on the chain most of the time. Now, a lot of time that options volume can be hedges. It can be misdirection. They can put, for example, bullish trades in here and here, but exit them here. Okay, so super early, right? They're not gonna put it like right at the bottom, right before rip. They're not gonna put it right at the bottom, right before rip, okay? The options chain is designed to mislead you. It's not your friend. But these supply and demand zones that are created are created with volume using Fibonacci as your basically steering wheel. And the algorithm will drive the security that you're analyzing to these liquid shelves Okay, up or down. And at each liquid shelf of major confluence and importance, you are going to see a Fibonacci level of major confluence and importance. Okay, that's how it works. Let's break it down. We'll do it again and we'll look at a different structure. A little bit clearer. Look at our current structure because I know it's all you guys care about. Okay, ready? Here's your move. Want to see how high up it's going to extend on the fib levels, and we're going to see where our volume shelves as well get created as we move up. So, high to low. So, where are we right now? And right now, you are at the 2618. Okay, that's where she basically decided to stop and accumulate in our current time frame. But where did she decide to stop and accumulate before this? Again, in your major pocket, okay, that I've been talking about. That is where your demand zone came down to. That is where your Wyckoff accumulation decided before it moved up into your phase D SOS, which we are now about to enter our phase E markup phase. So this was phase D. Right, let's look at Wyckoff, right? Phase D, and this is phase E. So you're gonna see this, okay? But it's all respected. It's all respected by FIB zones. Uh, Fibonacci levels. And what's our next Fibonacci level? 608. Okay. The 618, uh, you can multiply multiple times over to find different specific levels going extra high out of your kind of view for where the super macro currently is or extra low when you're fading out of a, like here, for example, right? If you want to know where we're where this can potentially drop to, you gotta take this. Well, let's pretend top is here, but it's not. You know, let's, you gotta take this and see where it's gonna potentially extend to on the downside, right? Look at these levels on the downside. So that's how it works. But just for beginners, I wanna just put this here. Guys, remember that every single time, it's so, so important. I don't care if it's on the five minute, the half an hour, the one hour, whatever. Just figure out, okay, when you're measuring, figure out which points of volume control 
have been the largest and most important. And, and because they're the largest, they have the highest magnet for the algorithm to drive price to when it's liquid testing. It's right here, right? That's your magnet. This is your magnet. This is your magnet. This is your magnet. This is your magnet. And I guarantee you when you're taking a, a structure, right, to find out where we could potentially retrace to, all the fib zones are going to line up, right? Look, all the, here's your pocket, right? All your fib zones, here's your 382, and then here's your 1618. It's, it's all respected, okay? The fib zones respect the volume zones. Does it have enough juice to break one um, supply zone and then break the next supply zone, liquid test the next supply zone, right? But Fibonacci is the, it's like your, your map. So you have to get comfortable with this. And you can use this at any point. You don't have to swing low to high on just the macro. If you guys are looking at the micro time frames as well, I mean, you could do this simply on any one of these, right? Any one of these you can swing. And that's your job as a, as a technical analyst. You wanna be on this chart messing around with the fibs from every single point of control in the structure, usually with Usually you want to take your, your FIB measurements from areas where the demand zone is exaggerated or the supply zone is exaggerated, right? You're looking for extremes to the upside or to the downside to measure your structure within. That's the key. And then when you figure out what those extremes are, then you want to say, okay, out of these Fibonacci levels, which levels were most respected within the structure that I'm currently analyzing? And for this one, very clearly, it's the 618, it's your pocket, your super important pocket. 618, 707, 786. Look, it's accumulating right there. And go fucking figure, <laughs> volume shelf. And now returning to this structure six months later, if you took your super macro fibs on this structure, you were able to see very clearly that the market was going to top right in the golden pocket that we talked about. Okay, market top at 613. This was um, right after Trump was inaugurated into office. But zooming in closer on the structure that we were analyzing at that moment in time, you were here. Okay, so taking your normal fib retracement levels, okay, you would have had an idea exactly where this was going to retrace just by looking at the confluence of volume shells. Okay, this is your demand zone and your golden pocket. Okay, further down to the 885. But 786 to the penny, guys. And that would have been your ultimate buying zone. See, as, uh, as it comes in as a higher low, which shows that there are more buyers here than sellers. Okay, if you add up this volume here in the VRVP shelves, you can also hit settings and just change this to delta so you can see um, where the buying and selling demand uh, imbalances are. This is your level that the algorithm is using as gas to move the market higher. This also coincides with the option chain as well, which is buying calls, institutions buying calls on the MAG7, writing puts on the indexes, dealers delta edging um, their risk <coughs> to push the market up to new all-time highs. But it's very simple fibs like this that you guys can get familiar with to understand where the market is going to go depending on which phase of Wyckoff that we are currently in. Remember, always, always look at the volume shelves, okay? Make sure you see a high level of confluence between volume and where the Fibonacci levels are located and do not be afraid to take Fib levels from zones that aren't at extremes all the time. Now, you usually want to do it from extremes, right? High to low, extreme to extreme. But if you do it in between, and this can be a very, very useful tactic because you're looking at a, a more local structure, you can also get solid Fibonacci um, extension levels or retracement levels just by doing the midpoints, okay? So to see this is a midpoint in between the top extreme and bottom extreme, okay? You're taking midpoints of a structure and look at where the next structure locally, because it's also trading in a mid-range bottomed, your GP, but it's your GP here. It wasn't your GP of extremes, okay? Your GP was higher when you did the extremes. It broke lower. Okay, understand? So doing it from a more local point might give you a better measurement to where the next local structure is going to go if the market is not going to make a aggressive phase D or phase E move to the upper downside.
Okay? That's basically it. Any questions you guys got, hit me in the chat.